watch music when I was a small child. I would watch video hits after school yeah. every day. And so like I still had like Robert Palmer's Simply Irresistible and Prince and Hugh Lewis like imprinted in my in, in my mind and I was like, man, it'd be cool to be a front man like that. We were always obsessed with ZZ Top. Mm -hmm. We always wanted to be like a ZZ Top kind of band. Because there's a bit. There's a there's a, uh, there's a there's commitment to the bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. The bit the bit sucks if you're not committed. Right. We're Chromio every day. Yeah. And ZZ Top is like <laughs> that's why they're our biggest influence. We want to be the ZZ Top of front. Because they they've got the respect, they've got the longevity, yeah. and they've got the full commitment. Yeah. Forever. The hipsters also like them. And they're funny. And Legs. they're very funny. They're hysterical. So, so when, Sharp dress, man. Yeah, that's right. all chromio DNA. This has blown my mind, right? Uh -huh. I love this very much. Uh -huh. I love this very much. So, so like, when the shows start happening, um, and you've, you've been behind the scenes for a long time, you've been producing hip-hop for a long time, it must have been a pretty amazing feeling when you start doing shows and people are going crazy dancing to your shows. Uh, or they weren't going crazy. <laughs> That did not happen like that, I'm sorry to say. Oh, in my mind, it's like, in, you know, oh, there's a, no. we cut to you, we cut oh, to, no, you no, walk no, out no, from no, behind no. the record store counter and all of a sudden you're in a rave in Montreal at 2.30 in the morning, no. everyone's losing their mind, no, you, no. Know, and, 11, you know? It's 11 p.m. and there's 35 people, oh, no. of which we all know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, it wasn't, there was four years of... Uh, there was four years of anti-heroic, anti-climactic grind. <laughs> Keep in mind, our set of references and what we were, you know, adoring and, and, and you know, copying. Yeah. This is frowned upon when we started. Back then. People didn't Back think then. Rick James was cool. They didn't think, they didn't think Hall and Oates were cool. It was too close for comfort. We're starting to reference stuff in late 90s, early 2000s and no one understood. Like, we could hear crickets all the way to Birmingham. <laughs> but then something miraculous happened between MySpace, Mashups, Diplo, Ed Banger, Justice, 2007, we come out with our second album, The Klaxons, MGMT. Yeah. All of a sudden, indie kids want to dance. Yeah. All of a sudden, indie kids are into neon, daft punk, party mode yeah and the pre and, pre 80s revival <laughs> yeah and we rode that wave yeah. and we didn't even know what happened we didn't know how it happened and that's when after four years of crickets we come back with our second album finished book a u.s tour and the whole tour sold out and right. we did not understand <laughs> Listening to Q, you're in the middle of my conversation with the band Chromio, the great electro funk band from Montreal. Started out in the late 90s, have gone on since to make people boogie all around the world. Over the summer, we're, we are re airing some of our favorite conversations from this past year on Q, and this is certainly one of them. We've been talking about those early days, how they found their sound, and in this next bit, I wanted to ask about the song that changed their career and their lives in a way that they never could have seen coming. <laughs> you know that's been ongoing for for a couple of decades now and, and those efforts involve um, identifying stands uh, in particular in closer proximity to to values um, where you can reduce the fuels 
and that screws on the ground, uh, ma ma manually thinning out the stands, removing some of the trees, removing some of the, the fuels and, and underbrush and understory uh, vegetation to reduce the potential intensity of a fire should one come into those areas. Uh, it's not intended to, to stop a fire, uh, but it, it is intended to modify the fire behavior and to keep the fire on the surface. Once a fire gets up into the canopy and accesses all of that suspended aerial fuel in the canopy, the, the, the fire becomes very intense, but it also rains embers down on the built environment. So if you can keep the fire on the surface with these treatments, the hope is that uh, you're, you're gonna avert those um, that sort of ember transfer and ignition of structures. My guest for the next hour and a half is Jen Beverly, a wildfire expert at the University of Alberta. And we would like to hear from you on our special program today about the wildfire situation in Jasper. If you've been affected by the evacuation, if you yourself are an evacuee, please give us a call at 1-866-468-4422. Very shortly, we hope to take you to a news conference that Premier Smith is holding along with Forestry and Parks Minister Todd Lowen and Public Safety and Emergency Services Minister Mike Ellis to bring us the latest on the wildfire situation. As we wait for that to start, uh, you may have heard in our 11 o'clock news that City of Calgary officials were apologizing to some evacuees this morning who were turned away from the evacuation center last night. Mayor Jody Gondek and Calgary Emergency Management Agency Chief Sue Henry explained earlier today what happened. Now, as you know, when the fire started, we opened up the evacuee reception center at Shouldice Arena, located at 1515 Home Road. This was intended to assist people with things like accommodations, with pet support, health and hygiene resources when they arrived in this city. Last night, when I heard that some evacuees came to our city but did not get the normal warm Calgary welcome, I immediately reached out to Chief Sue Henry to understand the situation. She was already aware of what had happened and quickly reopened the reception center. To those evacuees who did not immediately receive assistance, I apologize sincerely. I can only imagine what it must have been like to have to rapidly evacuate and then drive 12 to 15 hours to show up here and be met with closed doors. While this was only the case for about 20 minutes, I can understand that it would have been heartbreaking. I have been reassured that the reception center will remain open for the next 48 hours so that anyone who is seeking refuge from the wildfires is immediately able to seek assistance. And I want to thank the team at Calgary Emergency Management Agency for addressing yesterday's short gap in service so quickly. We all remain committed to supporting the people who had to flee from Jasper. Our reception center reopened for overnight access last night at 11 p.m. to prepare for any late arrivals. The previous night, we'd had nearly zero overnight visitors, so we had modified our hours to close earlier in the evening. However, with the fire reaching the town site last night, we were able to quickly adjust and reopen to any overnight travelers. As of this morning, Calgary has 465 evacuees that have registered and been accommodated through our reception center. The reception center is located at the Shouldice Arena at 1515 Home Road Northwest. And if you are a Jasper resident and need accommodation, we know you are hurting right now. Please come down and we will make you feel at home and help you through those supports. So yesterday, I, the, the gap in service was very, very short. So what the initial plan was for yesterday based on the night before was to have the center open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We still had a ton of people out there at 5 p.m. So we were continuing to allow people in and process those people. Those people were coming in until about 10 15 when our folks left. At that time we were able to, to see that there were still people coming. The conditions in Jasper changed last night and I think it changed the 